Whether you're a Russian Petro crook or the world's most moneyed soccer mom, your car is here. Let's drive the 2013 Mercedes G63 AMG and check the tech. Now, because I'm neither a Petro crook nor a well-moneyed soccer mom, I need an accessory Mercedes-Benz does not offer. Luckily, it's cheap, a bag. Because being seen in this thing is downright embarrassing. I mean, I spent several days in it, primarily in communities where Ferraris, Turbo Panameras, and convertible Bentleys are common, and they were driving by me mouthing the word dick. The vehicle has not changed much since 1979, making it the oldest platform that Mercedes still sells. It's an old military ride. In fact, the U.S. Marines just bought 150 of them. Now, normally I give you some spotter tips on how to identify the vehicles that we shoot. This one should be relatively easy. It's really tall, it's really square, it's got exposed external hinges, and it's unforgiving in its size and mass. They only make one version for consumers these days. It's what they call this long wheelbase wagon that actually has four doors and a second row. But it's not exactly a cargo hauler. It doesn't flatten down to haul sheetrock or plywood. It just lets you put more stuff in the back, like AK-47s if you're on assignment. And that back door swings charmingly like a barn door, not lifting up like a lift gate. Now spot the AMG version by the big five-spoke alloys, the badge work that calls out the engine. We'll get to that in a minute and these audacious dual side pipes. Who does that anymore? Now, before we get to any of the tech, your first indication that this car is riddled with practical quirkiness is down here. Either the world's smallest basketball net or someone left their codpiece here to dry. In fact, it's a cup holder, and you might laugh until you see it work. It's actually brilliant because it takes all the vibration of the road out of your coffee so nothing ever splashes out of there. I love these people. How'd they ever lose that war? Okay, onto the electronics. Command display, seven inch, non-touch. It's a Mercedes, they don't want any fingerprints on the screen. Nothing in here is dramatically new in terms of tech, but it's all standard. For this price, it better be. The nav system looks really good. They keep upgrading the map quality. They do a decent job with 3D buildings. You can also get Google Search and Google Street View on here with the Mercedes-Benz MB Apps Suite, which is free for three months, then you gotta pay for it. That will include web search, Google local search with Street View, as I mentioned, Yelp ratings, Facebook, and also the ability to send destinations to the car. We've reviewed it before, it works pretty well. Now, in terms of media, all the hits of modern tech are here and a few that aren't hits. Your media interface on the screen there is actually this set of pigtails in the console. You've got an iOS 30 pin on there right now. Here's a female aux. I believe you can swap this out for other connectors. You've also got USB down here right next to it. You've got Bluetooth streaming as well. 10 gigabytes of the hard drive are available for media. And there's a card reader in here somewhere, but I would never use that, so I didn't go looking. And of course, AM and FM radio both have HD on them. Satellite radios in here as well. One way to go on the audio here, it's going to be stock with Harman Kardon Logic 7 5.1 support as well, 450 watts, 12 speakers around the cabin. Nothing to option or modify there. Now, in terms of driver assistance tech, Mercedes likes to assume you know how to drive, so most of it is passive. We have adaptive cruise control to set distance and speed. There's blind spot warnings. They use these little lit up triangles in the mirror. There's no correction and there's no lane departure or correction for that either. Camera tech on this car is relatively pedestrian. You've got a backup camera, which is very handy, except you've got a spare hanging off the rump, and it's very hard to judge the distance of that thing because it's right up in the foreground of the camera. Overhead, a steel sunroof, no silly glass moonroof. You're not going to open this thing up for a breeze. You're going to open it all the way so some mud will splash off those big tires and get in your hair, or you're going to leave it closed so the bullets ricochet off the roof. Another serious oddity in this guy is the flat glass. You may not notice this in the car you drive, because it's always been this way, but you have curved glass for the most part and a sloping greenhouse. This guy's got flat walls and flat glass in them. See that big reflection? That's our camera light looking right back at you. When you're driving, you see odd reflections of the traffic on that side of the vehicle. So you look over and for a second, you think you've got traffic floating next to you. It's a little unnerving till you get used to it. Oh, now Mercedes raves about this shifter being a wonderful piece of AMG innovation. I don't see how. It looks more to me like Prius innovation adapted to a Mercedes. It's one of these little delicate electronic detent shifters for reverse, neutral, and drive, but then for some reason, park is a button. 
Why not make that part of the detents so I have one set of behaviors to control the drivetrain in this car? That just sounds like a bad idea to mix it up like that. And I hate this little comfort sport manual button. I like what it does. I hate how it does it. It's tiny. It's hard to find. It's got no actual finger recognition without looking for it. And it does something critical. Put you in a different drive mode. Put that up here near the paddles on the wheel. Make it big by the shifter. But that is silly. Now, if you think that the G63 is sublime, here's where it starts to get ridiculous. In the engine bay, this guy's got a five and a half liter twin turbo AMG V8. Yeah. And as you can see, lovingly handcrafted by old buddy Sasha Buninger. These are all made by hand, beautiful motors. I don't know if it's the most brilliant engine in a vehicle like this. I would love to see a big brawny diesel. They do that, but not in the AMG version. So here's what we've got. 536 horsepower, 560 foot-pounds of torque. It could lift this thing straight up, let alone down the road. Of course, we weigh 5,600 some odd pounds here. Zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds is amazing for that reason alone, if not because of the big square profile of the animal. Where it all comes out in the wash, rather badly, is the MPG. 12, 14. That probably means 10 real world. Yeah. No gas guzzler tax, though. Not because it isn't a gas guzzler, but because it's a light truck and they're exempt from gas guzzler regulations. All this power always goes out through a seven-speed sport automatic. Again, a weird thing in a vehicle that is so off-road centric. And does it drive all four wheels? Of course it does. Through not one, not two, but three lockable differentials. If this thing had eight wheels, it would drive them all. In fact, they actually make a six by six of this, but that's another video. Let's go for a ride. Well, I don't know if I could possibly flex this vehicle. It's so damn off-road capable. Think about it. Twin turbo, two banks of four cylinders each, and that big V8. We've got body on frame construction, two solid axles, three locking diffs. If you need heavier gear than this, it's probably going to get delivered in a C-17. You know what's the most eerie about taking this thing off-road? Nothing squeaks, nothing rattles. This really is a bank vault on wheels. Now on pavement, this thing prints tank. It's built like one, but you also get a lot of road feedback like one. The vibration and noise make it frankly tedious to drive on an everyday basis. And that barn burning engine is very muted in any of the automatic modes, but drop it into manual and get on those paddles and everything changes. It's a vicious big boy, as is that exhaust note that you would much more expect coming out of a 63 VET than a 2013 Benz. Okay, let's price this guy. Pretty simple, 135 grand right around there delivered and there ain't no options to speak of. Not seen that style, everything's in there already. But there are some additional costs. About 70 grand for a rose gold Audemars Piget because you're a petro crook and that's what you wear. Or 15 cents for a bag. That's how I roll. 